Now that smells like some cowboy stew right there. That is it is cold. It's like 29. So it is stew weather. I, I, I like stew. We grew up having it. It's one of the most basic things you can do. The more you cook, the better it is because then you get what? Leftovers. And whoo, how I do love me some leftover stew. But first we're going to add all this liquid. You want to? Tomato sauce. Then we're going to have three cans of green chilies because I do like some green chili. And I like some rotel too. So we're going to put that in there. Stewed tomatoes. Now I have two and a half cups of them baby carrots. Now I, you can buy them big long ones that Bugs Bunny eat, but take them longer to cook and you got to shave them. These are them little baby carrots and they get tender quicker. Last thing to get done in a pot of stew, the carrot. I got me one of them large Vidalia onions and they're just cutting it up sort of like so. Can you see that? Because you dice an onion up and you put it in stew or you chop it too fine, you can't even taste it no more, much less can you see it in there. So we're gonna dump that in there. I got one jalapeno diced, leave the seeds in it cause this is for town folk. If it was for country folk, I'd put like four of them in there. We'd heat it up a tad cause it's cold weather. Red taters. I do love a red skin potato. I love to leave the peeling on them. You can use a russet, but don't be using one of them Yukon golds cause it's gonna fall apart. We got about eight potatoes in here, medium size. This is gonna feed eight to 10, but really you'll be wanting it for like four people. That way you can have it two or three days in a row. Come on over here by old Bertha and let's get to cooking. I done got me some hot water out here on old Bertha. I'm gonna pour about that much. We may have to add some more after we get that meat to going in here, but we're gonna give that a good stir. You can use beef broth if you would rather or use them beef bouillon cubes. That was nearly what you call a blooper, Shan, cause the cord nearly got hot, okay? If you quit, it's hung on your boot top there, sugar. There we go, technical difficulties. We're gonna add about two tablespoons of minced garlic. I like that kind out of the jar, but if you got some you wanna chop, put that in there too. Then we're gonna brown us up some meat by it. You can substitute elk meat, deer meat, buffalo, but I like chunk meat and stew not ground. It's cold, so I brought this old cast iron skillet, this 20 out here, and I pre-warmed it before I put it on this fire. I'm gonna add just a little lubrication here. And we're gonna put about three and a half to four pounds of stew meat in there. These don't eat good, I promise. And you can tell, old Bertha's doing her job, she is. It won't take long to brown it up, but it's got to have a little seasoning. I'm going to use our original. And when you're looking for stew meat, a lot of times you can go straight into a butcher and tell them, hey, I need a little stew meat. They'll already have some cut, but I like to really cut my own out of a chuck roast pretty good or a rump roast. You can use a front shoulder clod. Just make sure you get good meat. Trim a lot of that fat off of it if it's got some on there, if you're doing your own. I just want to get this meat browned on all sides. So we're not cooking this meat fully through. We're just cooking it till it's good and brown everywhere. And then we're going to dump it in because what makes stew good, the longer it sits in that pot and simmers, the tender it's going to get. So that's what we're after. This stew meat is about browned up the way I like it. And you can see, it's all pretty brown, pretty even. And we're just gonna scoop her right over here and put her in there and let the magic go by happening. Now, a lot of people are gonna say be draining that juice off of it. Whoa, whoa, that's a cowboy sin right there. That's got some flavor in it. Put it all in there. There wasn't enough grease in there to hurt none of your arteries. Now, there's something I always like to do and it's called checking the pot. Now, when I pull this up, they plenty to go around there. There's meat, there's carrots, there's onions, but I'm not a vegetarian, so there's gonna be more of this in there than there's gonna be anything else, I promise you. But give it a stir, just make sure you, you think it looks proportionate to your tasting. Now I'm gonna let this come to a good rolling bowl till it really gets to cooking good. I'm talking rolling. Then I'm probably gonna slide it down here on a little lower end of heat and I want it just to simmer. 
Now you may have to add a little liquid to it as we go along. Just keep it where you got that same consistency we was looking at a while ago, because we'll thicken this broth right at the end if that's the way you like it. So. <music> get us something called a carrot and see that thing on mash it's ready to go I like it this way but if you want to thicken it get you a little cold water in a measuring cup get you a tablespoon tablespoon and a half of cornstarch whatever it calls for on the little box mix it together slide this back over some heat get it to come back to a boil stir in that cornstarch and water mixture it'll thicken a little You'll be good. You know, there's a lot of days I sit here at the wagon and I watch them fellers ride out on an old cold morning or old wet, foggy afternoon or something and just chill you to the bone. And I'm thinking, hey, I need to feed them fellers something that'll stick to their ribs but be hearty. You know, put a little, put a little goodness in their stomach and something that'll that'll last. An old cowboy burn a lot of calories when he's out there tending to cow and doing bovine battles. So I'm gonna fix them some stew. You know, there's nothing better to me on a cold day than, than some stew and maybe a cornbread. To me, there ain't nothing better to fend off a chill when them boys come back in. Been huddled up in that saddle all day. There ain't a lot of protection between here and the last barbed wire fence in North Dakota. So, I'm gonna fix them something to stick to their ribs. <laughs> will take the chill off on a cold day I promise you God bless you each and every one for coming by and seeing me and Shan hope you enjoyed hope you learned something